Hello and welcome to our training. This is the last video from the, this training. Today we are going to discuss about how to use UDS uh, testing in VTS Studio and how to test some services and uh, DTC settings. For this purpose I choose the um, sample configuration from Khan Diagnostic, UDS Diagnostic System Configuration. You can open it and uh, check the examples from here. You have a lot of uh, diagnostic services, you can set some DTCs here. Here we have the Diag test configuration which is opened and we are going to see some examples uh, for um, from Vector to see how to use the the test commands specific for um, for diagnostic. So we have them here in the diagnostic, diagnostic service, unlock ECU, Fault memory clear, fault memory DTC support, fault memory DTC, particular DTC, and so on. Uh, so here, the first test case, we have a serial number read for door uh, front left and front right. So this is the diagnostic command. This is how it's used. Uh, here, here is the, uh, the service, serial number read, and here is the ECU. Uh, on most uh, projects, on many projects, you will have different diagnostic ECUs. So door front left, door front left additional, door front right, and functional group. So uh, we are going to see some examples on uh, door front left. So this is the ECU, and here is the service. So if you expand here the services, you can find the serial number read. Uh, it should be here, yeah. So you just can drag and drop it here. Uh, here I have a lot of properties to use. Uh, result, timeout, <clears throat> depend on, depending on what you need. Um, here you can check the positive or negative response. This is the positive response and the negative response. So you, if you expect a negative, you can set it to the negative or positive response. I will delete it for now. And here you can check all the um, the, um, the parameters. Uh, yeah diagnostic parameters from your service. So this is the serial number. You can check physical, just put the numbers, or you can check index bytes or separate bytes. So of course you can set parameters. You have here record data identifier, but in this example we just check that the serial number is equal to this value. Here it's uh, um, door front left and here is door front right. So you read on different TCUs, you you read you read the the serial number from both TCUs. So I will build um, and start my configuration. I will play my test case. It's passed and open the test report to show you how the report looks. So you can see here. <clears throat> we said the, the P2 is set to 100 milliseconds, PX is 2,000 milliseconds. We have the positive response and diagnostic parameter serial number is equal exactly with the re reference value. And of course for the door front uh, right it's the same value. Uh, we can do it manually. Let's try for um, door front uh, left. Here you can find the service in... Um, store data. Uh, we should have it, I think. Uh, let me find the serial number read. Serial number read. Serial number read, yeah. This is the service. You can see it's 22F18C. And if you just double click it, you have the positive response. Here we have the the diag trace, so you can see what it's it said. Okay, um, let's see another example. <clears throat> we have check door uh, contacts. We have the same diagnostic service command, and here the difference is that uh, we have another service door status control. We need to set set the uh, door status control. It's physical. We set it to zero zero. And we check that it's set to zero when we receive the positive response. You can see here we read the positive response. Um, and of course, uh, the door status control, it's open. Here we have a value, 
table, open or close. This is from the, the CDD file or the PDX. Uh, it's defined in, in those files, so you can just take it from there. Uh, when you just write the, the value, the correct name of the value, uh, value entry, you just double click and take the, I think the value, uh, it's, I don't know, one or, you don't even need to know the value because you check the same, in the same way. And after you you read, you set it to open, of course you can read the door status read, the status control, here we can uh, read the status, so we just <clears throat> read, um, you can read uh, all your parameters, uh, diagnostic parameters, of course if you click here, you have some uh, dots here, you can, if you click here, you, ha you can um, copy to SysVar. So you set a sysvar, of course this is not allowed here, the types are different, but and you, I will uh, undo this because the types of the sysvar are not correct. You need to do, save it in a um, data type, sysvar is the best I think for uh, diagnostic parameters. And you can just read uh, one parameter, so if you just read it, I think you will just have the value in the report, so you cannot check exactly the value for a pass-fail fail criteria, but you you can just uh, <clears throat> you can just read it. Okay, and here door status return control is just a positive response we check. So this is the check door contacts. Let's check this test case too. It's really easy to use uh, diagnostic commands from uh, from the data studio. You have a lot of options. You can um, you can uh, add a lot of options easily without using cap couple codes or yeah. So you can see here. Um, We set it, it's not written in the report, but it was set to zero, the door contact. Here you can see the other, the other states. Door contact closed, open, and so on. Um, let's do it manually. So this is this door status control service. It should be here somewhere. It's higher control here in IO control, door status read, and um, yeah, it's now it's set to close because uh, we executed the test case. We, we, um, we use the door status return control. So now they're all set to close. So this is some basic examples how you can use the diagnostic service. Um, here you have more examples if you want to look. They are basically the same. Here you have unlock and write variant coding. So extended diagnostic start. Uh, diagnostic unlock is you. So security level, it, it seems that uh, you have this. Um, I didn't use it until, until now, but it worth a try. So you can set the security level and just put the command and it unlocks the ACU. Here you can um, read, and if you can see here, they are uh, stored in those uh, values, in those system variables, and of course, when you write your coding, just take um, the values from, from your sysvars, which you save them here, and so it's really easy to, for, for this example, for coding, you read your, uh, your values, save them in sysvars, and you put those here and uh, set the variant coding right based on those values. So it's easy to, to use it like this. So we have another example here, which I want to take a look at it. It's the uh, fault memory DTC. So how do we how do we use uh, the DTC's handling in VT Studio? This uh, 
this command is very useful. Uh, we have here the uh, default memory clear too, which is really useful too. So this command allows you to check the which DTCs are stored in the memory, which are active or not. Or of course you can you can check in detail the status of each DTC you want. You choose the ECU. Um, here you have uh, another property which is. Um, um, DTC lookup UDS. This is very nice because it allows you to set uh, to check individually every byte of the status. So if you want to check the first byte bits, you can do it. So you have here. Uh, this is very nice. Um, you can set the, the, this. Can uh, it's very nice uh, this rest bus because you can store your DTC and um, if you read it. Uh, I think the first one, yeah. You can see here the snapshot <clears throat> and the status it's 0F because we just set those all four bits to F and those are all to zero, so this is the status. So you, you, you can set your DTC with uh, whatever status do you want. Um, yeah, here we have the snapshot. You can read those two using the diagnostic command. Um, so here you have um, so you have this DTC lookup UDS. It's very useful because you just click and you say to the to the your system that you want to check exactly that those bytes are set to one. So on and the others will be set to zero. Uh, I will delete this for now. What well, the easiest thing is, you just set occurrence not allowed DTC from description. And DTC from description, you can just drag and drop. If you want DTC row, you can put the ID of the DTC here. So, but DTC from description, it's more easy because uh, you just find it here and select it. So this is the easy way to check that the DTC, the DTC is set or not set. Okay, you can add here status UDS or uh, yeah, uh, you can edit. Yeah, you can edit individually those bits for the status. You can add them individually for each DTC you check. Of course, you can use this uh, uh, this command for individual DTCs and use it here. You, you use it five times. You can use it five times here. So, but it's easier to put them all in the same command, not use it separately. It, it depends on you. How do you want to do it? Um, yes, uh, this I will. No, we don't need it. So this is the easy way that we check that the DTCs are not set. We do a fault memory clear. Really easy. You just drag the, the ACU on which you want to set the command. This is the 04 command. Um, here we have a function that stores some DTC. You set the supply voltage to 9, 15, and so on to, to set the over voltage and under voltage DTCs. Uh, and here you can see that the first two DTCs are occurrence mandatory. So they're not here are not allowed, but here they need they need to be set. So we check that the DTCs are set here. So we put this occurrence uh, to mandatory, and the others not allowed. So let's try to execute this test case. I will restart my configuration, and let's see um, on fault memory read if we have it passed. Okay, the report could not be renamed. I don't care now. Uh, I just want to see my report. So here, the DCC not found, not found, not found. Here we set external supply voltage to set the DTCs. Uh, and here we have the DTC set. So the first two DTCs found which matching status. Okay. Um, now let's me let's be more specific and uh, check those status um, are um, here. So let's check the status. I think the status will be those bytes. The the test failed and confirmed DTC will be set to one. So I want to check those two. For those DTCs, I will uh, add here the DTC status UDS. Test failed and confirmed. And for this one again, 
uh, test failed and uh, confirm. So the status, I think it will be 09. And I think that's it. I will build and try to execute again the test case. So it's more specific. Because depending on your project, of course, you will have different status of your DTCs. You have the reset of DTC, you have snapshots, you have uh, aging or different um, status uh, for your DTC. And you need to be more specific here. So you check exactly the status, what you, you need for your DTC. And again, of course, it's passed. So I was right. Um, it's again the DTC is found with matching status. Let's try to un unbox this and see if you have a fail. We should have a fail because the test failed. It should be set to one. And if it checks that it's set to zero, it, we should get a fail. Yeah, of course, it's a fail because we the, the status is not correct. And here, of course, you have the status of your DTCs. When it's failed, it gives you the status so you can see. You can see that the confirm and the test fail, it's set to 1. So you expected the test fail to be 0. So that's why the test scale fails now. So I'll put it again to test failed. So this is really an easy way to to check the full memory DTC. Of course, you can use here parameters um, here and uh, in the diagnostic, you can use here parameters if you want, or where, where here, where you check, or where you set, you can use parameters, you can do it more generic, but this is just an example how to, to use diagnostic service and uh, specific fault memory DTCs. Those are very important and useful to use. It's easier than um, than just using a um, couple test cases. Uh, here in diagnostic, I just wanted to show you just one uh, thing. Let's just take one parameter. You can uh, uh, add here index bytes. Um, and for the index bytes, it's very nice because, for example, your door contact, let's say it has 100 bytes. So you, you don't need to check all the bytes. Let's say you need to check the positions from 10 to 20. So you will put 10. This is the byte 10. And here is the value. Let's say it's FF. So um, I think it's 0. It's FF. Yeah, the byte 11. Let's say you want to be the same. And you can go on until the end. So it's very useful this thing because um, you don't need to. You, you sometimes you don't need the all value of your uh, parameter, of your diagnostic parameter. You just need you just need a, a part of your uh, parameter so you can choose what bytes you want to check. So it's very useful. It can save you to not create a couple test case, a couple function for this specific example. So this is um, some details about diagnostic testing and DTC testing. Of course, you can play. You can open this UDS system uh, configuration. You can check the other test cases. You can create other test cases. You can store here all the DTCs, and you can read the status individually and see how it works. You can play with the with those panels, you can do more examples. You have a lot of diagnostic services. Try, for example, to check a negative response. Try to, to read other parameter values and do more examples for the sake of examples and exercising. So this is the last video from the VT Studio introduction training. Thank you very much for, um, for watching. And stay tuned. Do not do not forget to subscribe for the future trainings I'm planning to do on this channel. And thank you very much.